Hello and welcome to Chapter 2, Chemistry and Measurements. We'll begin with Section 1, Units of Measurement. Science is all about measurement, and for a quantitative science like chemistry, measurements don't mean much without units. Units are agreed upon quantities that scientists can use to standardize and compare different measurements across vast distances and long time periods. In this picture, we can see some examples of different units used to measure different quantities. We have temperature in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit, mass or weight in kilograms or pounds, and several different units for length. For shorter lengths, meters and inches are useful, but for longer distances, kilometers and miles are more common. You may be surprised to learn that almost every measurement we can make in science can be reduced down to some combination of these basic units of length, mass, temperature, and time. There are a couple of others, but they're more common in physics than chemistry, so we'll forget about those for now. The utility of any system of units depends mostly on two things, how widely it is accepted by different people, and how easy it makes the math. On both counts, the metric system and its close relative, the Système International, win hands down. Most of the world uses some form of the metric system in everyday life, and scientists everywhere have agreed that this system is preferable. While there are some minor differences between these two systems, they're not that important for our purposes, so I'll mostly gloss over them when they come up in the next few slides. After this video, you may never need to remember the differences again. This table shows the basic units for these two systems, and here you can see the differences. Both systems use meters for length and seconds for time, but metric uses liters for volume, while SI uses cubic meters. Metric uses grams for mass, while SI uses kilograms. And metric uses Celsius for temperature, while SI uses Kelvin. However, even these differences are really just minor matters of scale. A cubic meter is a thousand liters, and a kilogram is a thousand grams. We'll see in the next chapter that even the Kelvin temperature scale is based on the Celsius scale, so there really isn't much difference between these two systems at all. For American students, the biggest challenge with these units is learning to translate the U.S. system that we're used to into metric, but we'll see how to do that later on in this chapter. If you're a student who grew up in another country, chances are good that this is one case where the cultural barrier might actually work to your advantage. Now let's take a look at some of these units in a little more detail. The metric unit of volume is the liter, abbreviated capital L, and in a laboratory it's often useful to take an even smaller unit called the milliliter, abbreviated little m, capital L. We'll learn more about these prefixes like milli a little later on, but for now you may want to remember that one liter is a thousand milliliters. We also see the relationship here between liters and quarts, or milliliters and quarts. But this is much less straightforward and not really worth memorizing. The picture on the right here shows a typical graduated cylinder, a piece of glassware used to measure liquid volumes. Notice that we've pretty much ignored the SI unit for volume, cubic meters, because they're just too large to be useful in most chemistry labs. Next, we have the metric unit for length, meters, which can also be subdivided into 100 smaller parts called centimeters. You may be a little more familiar with these units, as meter sticks are relatively common even here in the U.S. You can see some of the relationships between the metric units and the U.S. units like yards and inches, but again, they're not worth memorizing. Next, we have the units for mass, and in this case, both the metric unit, grams, and the SI unit, kilograms, are pretty useful at the laboratory scale. A nickel weighs about 5 grams, while a kilogram is about 2.20 pounds. After that, we have the temperature scales, which we'll go into in a lot more detail in the next chapter. For now, just know that you'll need to get used to both Celsius and Kelvin, because we use both in different cases. In the U.S., we're much more used to thinking in terms of Fahrenheit, which is quite different. If the weather forecast in the U.S. says it'll be 39 degrees, you should dress for a chilly day because that's close to freezing in Fahrenheit. If you heard that same forecast in Europe or South America, however, you'd want to put on shorts and a tank top because 39 degrees Celsius is over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And finally, we have units of time, which are pretty universally known. 
There are 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, and about 365 days in a year. There's nothing really new to learn here for the most part. This learning check is asking for the SI units for these types of measurements, but it's okay if you give metric too. Try to pause the video and remember as many as you can. This is simply a matter of remembering the list of units we just learned, so you can see the answers here. In SI, the units are cubic meter for volume, kilogram for mass, meter for length, and kelvin for temperature. If you answered in metric, you should get liters for volume, grams for mass, meters for length, and degrees Celsius for temperature. In the next video, we'll talk more about measurements and start to discuss significant figures.